Good morning. This module is mechanical and electrical systems on dam gates. So uh, there's several objectives here. The first one is to explain how mechanical and electrical components on gates affect risk. And then we're going to determine how to calculate probability of failure of components on gates um, and show how a system's probability of failure is calculated using fault tree analysis for one gate or multiple gates. Fault tree analysis is the most common way that or the most common method we use for mechanical and electrical. Uh, and then uh, demonstrate a fault tree analysis. The operation of gates at a project is often overlooked in dam safety discussions because they usually don't lead directly to loss of life. Um, but gates contribute to other events which can cause loss of life or economic damages. So we'll show how to determine what's the probability of a gate not operating, and we'll also demonstrate the software which is used to, de to uh, determine the likelihood of a gate or multiple gates not functioning. Um, so what are the risks involved with not operating gates with, with or misoperating gates at a structure? I think uh, the previous presentation talked a little, you know, mentions a couple instances, case studies where gates not operating contributed to a dam failure. Um, so some of the issues involved include, will the gates open or close when needed? Is there a way to predict if the gates will operate when needed? Uh, and what are the consequences if the gates don't operate? You know, as mechanical electrical engineers, we're, we're primarily uh, interested in the first two issues. And the third issue is it takes a multidisciplinary approach to answer that question. So we ask the question, how does, how does failure of mechanical or electrical components affect the project's overall risk assessment? If a spillway gate does not operate during a flood event, it can cause overtopping of the gate or dam leading to failure. That's for a single gate. You know, most projects have multiple gates. But if the power fails at a project, the operation of all gates can be affected. The gates maybe can't operate. If they're closed, they can't open. Thus, increasing the risk of loading on the dam or even overtopping. If the service gates can't raise, for example, winter drawdown cannot occur, which increases the risk of flooding due to spring rains. I'd also add to that if the service can't, gates can't be lowered, that increases the risk of uh, unintentional uh, discharge that, that could exceed uh, the channel capacity downstream. We've had that. I can think of more examples of that that we've had than the uh, service gates cannot raise problem. When determining how the mechanical or electrical operation of gates fits into the project's overall risk, we must Think about the events which must happen to cause failure. That's where your, the event tree comes in. Often redundancy is built into the mechanical electrical systems, which reduces the, the likelihood that the event will occur. Even if a mechanical or electrical event occurs, there may be additional capacity built into a dam, which allows for one or multiple gates to be out of service in the final potential failure mode to not occur. This event tree steps through the events that, for an electrical failure that would potentially cause catastrophic failure. Now, that for electrical, typically, um, it's going to affect all gates on a project. So, um, a lot of times for electrical installations, there's a lot of, there should be quite a bit of redundancy built in. You'll have two or three different sources of power, um, commercial power, and there may be a hydro, hydroelectric power source, 
emergency generator. Um, all those need to be looked at in this case. So this event tree, first event, you have a high water or flood event, electrical power fails, that causes all gates to fail to operate. Then you ask the question, is it uh, hydraulically, will, will the emergency spillway gate um, take the flow capacity, yes or no? If yes, then the electrical does not affect the risk. If no, then you ask the question, will the dam over, overtop, yes or no? Um, no, again, the electrical does not affect the risk, but yes, it does. Uh, two more event trees, uh, the same concept here, but except for mechanical failure, um, typically it affects one gate at a time. So if a project with multiple gates, it may or may not be an issue, uh, depends on how many gates, if it's a project with two or three gates and the failure of one gate could be significant. Um, so same concept here, high water or flood event, mechanical drive fails, one gate fails to operate. Yes or no, um, hydraulically flow capacity suffers. If it's yes, uh, then the mechanical gate not working it does, does uh, induce some risk. And the same thing, same thing with controls failure. I would caution though that, um, particularly for controls, that sometimes that's those are not independent failures um, per gate. So a controls failure could could affect more than one gate. Um, you just have to. Look at how the controls are set up. If it's, if it's, for example, if it's a, uh, a PLC controlled gate or gate system, then the failure of that PLC could could affect all the gates. If it's, if it's um, strictly local controls, then probably not. Mechanical failure too. You have to think about how it. Um, you know, typically the, the mechanical hoist for a gate is independent per gate, but there are, um, particularly when it comes to redundant operators, there are gate hoist systems that have uh, redundant um, features that are shared between gates. So it's not, they're not strictly independent. So it's something else you have to consider. Uh, th this is uh, talking about the way of predicting uh, or calculating the probability of failure of dam components. Um, two ways that we typically predict probability of failure. Expert elicitation or statistical formulas. Uh, the, the Weibel distribution formula is one of those formulas. Um, it was developed by uh, uh, Professor Weibel that you see on the right there. Well, if you're more you know, interested in the history, you can go, there's some uh, information on the internet that you can go read about that, but that shows the, uh, the Weibel distribution formula. We have, um, there's really uh, four important parameters on that, in that equation that you need to know the time, the time, the time that uh, you're in. That it's, it's the time that sh the location and time that you're on the Weibel curve, location parameter. And that's we'll talk about these in subsequent slides, so I won't go into depth on these. Uh, shape parameter and the characteristic life. Uh, the, a problem with the traditional Weibel formula is that um, for a lot of our project, particularly flood control dams, the machinery is not. Um, it's not used on a regular basis. You know, we like to see the machinery exercised um, at least monthly. Sometimes that's not possible. Some I've seen where quarterly is pretty common, or even 
annually. So that, the traditional libel, libel formula doesn't work very well for those types of um, um, exercise schedules. So the dormant wobble formula was developed. Um, a couple more parameters were added for the dormant wobble formula. Those bottom two in red, the inspection interval or time since last operated. And uh, the number of times the component is operated in its life. So what you really need to know is the inspection interval or time since last operated. So if it's, if it's monthly, then, uh, then uh, if this formula is based on years, you would uh, calculate the uh, uh, fraction of a year be between operations of the machinery. Um, to talk about some of these uh, parameters, the uh, ADA is the characteristic life. The definition is the characteristic life is the point in time when we, on the Weibull curve that we'd expect 63.2% of the components under study to have failed. An example is on an electric motor, um, if it's determined that the characteristic life of a component is 25 years, then you would expect to have 63 of 100 components fail by that time in history. Characteristic life is traditionally gathered through testing of thousands of samples. Um, we have gone through a data search of the inventory of dams, both flood control and navigation dams and compiled a list of how many and how long um, its mechanical and electrical components have lasted in real world applications. This data has been um, placed on a wobble curve to determine to the characteristic life of its components. I would just caution about that data though. It's some, some of the sample size is limited. So um, we really need to continue updating that data, which hasn't been done for several years. Here you see a, a typical Weibull curve, which has been generated from data that was collected from dams throughout the core inventory. It's calculated using the Weibull formula and plotted. You can see where the characteristic life is determined, where the line meets 63.2%. And at that point, it will be 93 years old. And this particular curve is for an electric motor. A second key parameter element of the formula is the beta or shape parameter. Um, it's really the slope of that, uh, of that curve at any point in time. A beta of less than one implies quality problems or insufficient burn-in, sometimes called uh, infant mortality. A beta of one is, is more of a random type failure. It's common in electronic devices um, that, that uh, have random failures. A beta greater of one is wear out failures at a definite or predictable end of life. Um, they typically, uh, age related due to service conditions such as corrosion, wear or fatigue cracking. Uh, we use a co combination of beta parameters from um, ETL 560 and the statistical data that we've collected on components. Again, here's the the, you know, the Weibull curve for electric motor developed from data that we've collected at USACE projects. The um, this this particular one has a beta shape parameter of three point eight eight. So the higher that number goes, the steeper the slope. At that point, is is the quicker that your component will fail after it reaches the um, characteristic life. So, you know, a really 
high number, like four or five, means once it reaches that characteristic life, you'll start to see a lot of failures pretty quick. Another important parameter, or the key, one of the key parameters in the formula is the location parameter. Location parameter is the difference in years between the component, when the component was originally installed and when it was replaced. So an example is, if a component was originally installed in 1965 and replaced in 1995, that location parameter would then be 30 years. If the, you know, if the component has not been replaced, that location parameter is zero. And then the uh, fourth key element in that uh, dormant Weibull formula is the inspection interval. Um, that's tau. Um, it's time in years between when the component was last inspected or operated properly to present. So um, we call it an inspection interval, but if it's operated, uh, we typically say that that is the same as an, an inspection. So it's inspection, operation, slash exercise interval. The final results. So using those parameters for this, our example motor, um, a 50 year old electric motor with the characteristic life of 93 years, which was last operated one month ago in a normal environment would have a probability of failure of 0.06% this year. Um, so we wanna know how to calculate a systems um, probability of failure, a system made up of multiple um, machinery components. So that, that uh, typically involves, for us, fault tree analysis. Fault tree analysis um, is made up of, uh, we're going is talking about uh, you know, OR gates and NAND gates typically for us. There are other type of gates, but um, so the OR gate formula is an example shown below. If it's, it's the OR gate is known as the law of addition for independent non-exclusive events. And again, for an example, OR gate formula is shown here with, um, you know, gate fails to operate, that could be due to the gate operation controls failed, the gate mechanical drives fails, or the electrical power source fails. And that formula at the top there is, is in the mathematics that would go along with that OR gate. The other type of most common gate that we use is the AND gate. So um, AND gates are, are used for redundancy. Um, an example is if there are two pumps in a hydraulic system and it takes both pumps to fail to operate. Uh, so we use those gates, as I mentioned, in fault tree analysis. Um, here's an example of a simple wire rope drive systems probability of failure using fault tree analysis. So the wire rope drive system depends on uh, several components there, the brakes, the brakes, pa pads and springs, couplings, motor, gear reducer, a couple of different types of gear reducer there. So here's an example of a simple fault tree. It looks, I say simple, but you can see there's a lot of, a lot of different events there. Now this is, you know, why we use software to do this because, you know, the math gets very complex very quickly. As you can see, there are many components. And often if one of the components failed, then the entire system fails. And that's true of any, anything that's feeding into an OR gate there. So I'm going to do a quick demonstration 
So this is the uh, this is the software that we typically use in the in the core. It's um, Reliability Workbench by Isograph. Uh, if anybody's interested, I think it is available on the app portal. Um, so I, I pre-built a uh, simple fault tree in the uh, interest of time instead of building this, you know, in class. I, had, I was going to do it two, two different ways, but I didn't want to, I guess, uh, take the time to for you all to watch me type these things in. But this fault tree is if um, top event is, um, this has nothing to do with dam gates, but it's kind of a real world. Um, example, but top event is I'm late for work, but, you know, I, I started doing this, I guess, back before we started teleworking right now. And now uh, being, me being late for work really doesn't depend on my car working or not. But anyway, I should say late for work, not teleworking, but <laughs> there's a, um, Okay, I've, I've got four different things that could happen here that would make me late for work. My car breaks down, that event there, there's a traffic jam. And if you know Huntington, West Virginia, there's hardly ever any tra traffic jams there. Um, I'm mugged in the parking lot. Now, that, that's, that's probably, um, now I've got a lesser probability on that, but mm, I, I'm not sure about that anymore. And then I'm run over in the crosswalk, and that, that could happen. <laughs> And that's I've got a little higher probability on that than a <laughs> than a traffic jam, but we'll concentrate mainly on the car breaking down because that's where the events that um, you know we have Weibel curves associated with those. Um, so uh, first of all, the late for work. I've got an OR gate there, so if any of those events happen, then I'm late for work. Now, it breaks it down even further. If the car breaks down, well, that's also an OR gate. So if my tires fail, if the engine fails, or if my brakes fail, then uh, I'm late for work. Or at least the car breaks down. But really, it, I'm late for work, too, because that feeds into another OR gate. Um, and I've got four tires on the car, so it takes any of those four to fail. And my tires fail. Uh, engine fails and the brakes fail. And, you know, if you noticed on the um, the brakes fail, I've got those front brakes and rear brakes going into an AND gate. So if either, or it takes both of those sets of brakes to fail to, to uh, make my brakes fail. And, and in turn, the car breaks down. Well, I, I would caution though that, you know, this is assuming that my front brakes and my rear brakes are independent of each other. And that's typically not, you know, not the case. <laughs> but we're assuming that here for the, just for illustration purposes, um, because there's, you know, there's a common hydraulic system that operates your front and back, back brakes and other other systems that that contribute to maybe both both sets of brakes failing at the same time. So I've got some. Um, I um, set up some failure modes for each of these. My tires, I've, it's, uh, I've selected a, a uh, wobble model the, uh, and set a characteristic life of my tires at seven years, which is, you know, it's really not your tires, you know, it's really not dependent on time. It's more on miles, but we're pretending like it's time. Uh, shape parameter of five, and that's fairly high for a shape parameter. That tells me that, uh, you know, at seven years, your tires, if it hits seven years, your tires are going to start failing fairly regularly. And a location parameter of seven, which means I've replaced my tires at seven years. One, there's another setting here that's up in the calculation part in the project settings that, that I've set that the car is 10 years old. So in the 10 year life, I re replaced the tires at seven years. So I've got three years on these tires. 
uh, engine fails, a, you know, similar thing. I've got a characteristic life of 20 years on the, that and a fairly, a, well, a lower shape parameter so that it's a more gradual failure. So at 20, 20 years, you could have already had some failures typically, but um, it's, it's the, the shape of that curve is more, is, is not as steep, it's, it's more gradual. And of course the engine has not been replaced or rebuilt or anything. Same idea on the brakes. I uh, said there's six years characteristic life on that and fairly high shape parameter. They have not been, well, actually, yeah, I had the brakes replaced at eight years. Now, these other miscellaneous events that could happen, they are not, I did not select a Weibel curve on those. It's a fixed, a fixed unavailability to 1% on the traffic jam. Um, 0.1 on being mugged and 1.5 on being run over in the crosswalk. Um, so that's all entered in there. I just have to go up here and hit the perform analysis. And it shows me that I have an availability of 0.2296. We typically say that is the same as a probability of failure, which would mean it's about a 20, well, it's 22.96 probability of failure. Um, but unavailability and probability failure is not necessarily the same thing. Um, I'd go back to my tires failing, um, and I did not enter a test interval here because I'm saying I use this car every day, more than once a day, so it's it's used fairly regularly. So the dormant Weibel equation is not appropriate here. Um, it's it's the non-dormant. But in doing so, I also, you know, I should have entered a uh, mean time to repair um, for the wobble, for this wobble equation. I did not. So that's what this is saying. Once I have a flat tire, I don't use this car anymore for the rest of the year. So that is unrealistically probably affecting, you know, making this high unavailability of 22.96. If I put, you know, mean time to repair, say, you know, takes you an hour to, to change a tire, that would, that would uh, probably, why don't we do that real quick? I don't know how I'm doing on time, but this won't take a minute. Well, I got to do this in years, so I'm just going to stick something in here. We'll say point. That's the test interval. I need to. See, I can replace a tire fairly quickly. I put a point of oh one year in there. So that changed that unavailability. You know, it, it went down some. It's at now eighteen point four percent. So that's a that's a real you know you can imagine how you'd use this for for a dam gate hoist. Um, so with that 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 uh, you know is a real quick demonstration and I'll take any questions on that or on the presentation itself. Any questions for Brandon? Yep, we have one. So would you use this on a? PA level screening or IES or DSMS? I think you could. I mean, we we have, but not very often. Um, it, it's more, uh, I've been asked to do it on IESs and, and uh, uh, at, the, at that level, the PA, you know, sometimes if, if you get into, you know, Discussions of of how a how the machinery or um, that operates spillway gates is affecting uh, the risk, and then uh, you may need a fault tree run. But I haven't run into it very often where it's used at the PA level. I had two questions. One on your why you've got a 
T and a tau, but they appear to be put the same value in both. Without going back to the slides, I think that was just a, a font. Uh, yeah, it should be tau. Okay. But maybe when they, they were typing the, the formula, they didn't have a tau or, or some. So that's the same thing. Okay. And the other, you um, equally weight an inspection versus successfully using the component. But like in the case of a, a gate, if you do an inspection, you're doing mega testing and you're figuring out um, how the how the components are behaving. If you just operate it, the gate may go up, but it may tell you that. It, but you don't get that piece of information that uh, maybe there's some issues with the with the wiring or or something internal. So, is that something that gets accounted for differently, or is that just um, the way it's done? Well, it's the way it's done. But the primary thing I think that inspection interval or you know testing interval is telling you is that once you once you test it, if you have a failure then you're going to re repair it, hopefully before you actually need it the next time. So it's kind of resetting the, the wobble curve or the, that, that um, yeah, the failures. So, um, yeah, you're right. I mean, an, an inspection can mean a lot of different things, uh, but we're primarily interested in that inspection or test giving you the opportunity to uh, make repairs before the next time it's inspected or actually needed for service. Funding's parameters change with, with time, so I think it, I guess in my mind that the, the probability of unavailability changes with time as well. Uh, how, how is that accounted for? Well, in this case, um, you know, there's a setting uh, in the software. If I go up here to options and calculation, this 10, you know, in my example here, I'm, it's saying my my car is 10 years old. So um, that 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 number then applies to every, for example, wobble curve in here that you're at 10 years on the wobble curve. And, and that would um, give you the probability of failure at, at 10 years for each component. You know, for example, if, you know, your engine's 10 years old and it have, has characteristic life of 20 years. And that, that then identifies what the probability of failure is. And when we're looking at something like a dam gate or something like that, we would be looking at that snapshot in time. So we would assign the current age of all the components to make sure that this is the probability of unavailability today at this time. You're not forecasting out. Not typically, not for uh, a risk yeah, assessment. And we typically don't do that. We're looking at a snapshot in, snapshot in time. But this, yeah, reliability workbench does have the ability to do a, a time dimension, time dependent analysis too. So if you're looking at uh, um, like doing a, doing a major rehab study, I've I've used that then to uh, to to uh, come up with hazard curves. So. You know, that's an example of where you're trying to forecast into the future, you know, what 30 years from now, what, what the problem, what the reliability is going to be.